Awesome. Okay, if you're here for an overview of, wait for it, Vue.js, uh, you're in the right spot. My name is CJ. Uh, I am CJ on Denver Devs. Uh, my email is cj at noel.computer. That is a real uh, internet address. <laughs> and, um, on GitHub, I am W3CJ. Um, all of the slides, links, everything I'm showing tonight uh, is at git.io slash overview. So, first, before I even get into it, I just want to say thanks to all of you. Um, if it were not for you, I would not be here. Thanks for voting for me. Thanks for being a part of the Denver Developer Community. So, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. Um, also, a huge thanks to the organizers and volunteers of Develop Denver. Um, I think we, we often take it for granted like how awesome this community is. Like The fact that we all get together today and talk about cool stuff. And let's give a round of applause for Develop Denver. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, agenda for tonight. Oh, my GIF's present. And it's a GIF with a hard G. There we go. OK. <laughs> Oh, wait, oh yeah, thanks for um, So first, I'm going to talk about who I am, what I've done, why I am qualified to talk about Vue.js. Uh, then we're going to figure out who all of you are. Uh, we're going to then talk about what exactly Vue.js is, where does it fit in in the front-end framework, that. Uh, and then we're going to do a brief history of Vue.js and then get into the overview of Vue.js, write some code. Uh, we'll go over awesome Vue.js, which is tons of links to sample projects. Uh, and tutorials and all, all kinds of stuff to get started with you, and then talk about the Vue.js community itself. So first, who am I? My name is CJ. Uh, I'm a lead instructor, principal full stack developer at Galvanize. I've been with Galvanize close to two years now. Um, if you're not familiar with Galvanize, we are three things. First, we are an education company. So I uh, am an, a lead instructor in the uh, web development immersive program. Uh, we also offer a data science immersive program. Uh, we're also an event space. You might have attended a meetup or some kind of event at Galvanize. And we're also a co-working space. So we have open desk seating. Uh, we, you can rent suites. Um, and all three of those things combine to create an entrepreneurship community. Um, oh yeah, uh, I have some students in the audience. So please raise your hand if I've ever helped you debug some code. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Uh, that makes me less nervous. Let's keep going. OK. <laughs> Uh, I, in my career, I've worn many hats. So uh, I started off as a help desk consultant. I've done system administration. I've worked in quality assurance, uh, became a software engineer, and now I'm an instructor. So I really am a full stack developer. I've worked in all the different places in the stack. Um, I have given some meetup talks. You might have seen me there. Uh, you might know me from. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Node.js meetup and DimmerScript, I gave uh, security best practices with Node.js. So, uh, that was all about basically how to hack a Node.js Node app and how to make it not hackable. Um, I did a talk at DimmerScript about ECMAScript, TC39, and the future of JavaScript. Recently, I did an overview of Vue.js, which is a, a CSS component library for Vue. Um, and even more recently, I was at the Node.js meetup for the front end face off. So we had Kyle Coberly doing Ember, we had Michael Herman doing. Uh, React, no, Angular 4, Angular 4, uh, and Brooks Patton did uh, React Redux, and I wrote everything from scratch, uh, but I did it in VC style. Um, so the links here are up to the, all the videos and slides and resources for all those talks. Um, also, how, why I'm eligible to be talking about to Vue.js. So I've worked with a lot of front-end frameworks. Um, so I have, I have a little over two years experience with Angular 1x, three Angular 1x apps in production. Um, I worked for about a year. Uh, on React Redux. I have one React Redux app in production. Um, and more recently, I've been working with Vue.js 2x. Um, and I have three Vue.js apps in production, along with many, many different toy projects to uh, demonstrate the various concepts in a lot of these frameworks. So I've messed around with a lot of these frameworks, and that's kind of where I'm going to be talking from tonight. Cool. So let's find out who are you? OK. Who writes JavaScript daily? Awesome. Turn to a neighbor and give them a high five. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> there you go. So a, a lot of us do. I'm sure we, we have other people, maybe UX designers and people like that, also interested in what Vue has to offer. Um, who has used a front-end JavaScript framework? So this could be React, Angular, Ember, Polymer. OK, let's, let's survey the room. Uh, my React people, raise your hand. All right. My Angular 1x people, OK. My Angular 4, oh, OK, just, just for you. Uh, Ember? 
Yeah. All right, Ember, sweet. <laughs> uh, any polymer? There you go. Uh, what about knockout JS? <laughs> One guy, yes. <laughs> sweet. Okay, who here has heard of UJS before this talk? Awesome. Uh, who here has never used Vue.js? Beautiful, we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna learn a lot. Who has used Vue.js in a project? Awesome, hopefully there'll be some little tidbits of information that you can take away as well. Um, and who uses Vue.js daily? Okay, two hands. I wanna see you at the next Vue.js meetup. I am the organizer, we'll talk about it later. Cool, let's get into this. Uh, so first, what is Vue.js? And let me start a timer. So if you visited their website uh, or seen or heard anything about it, uh, the creator coined this, this phrase, the progressive JavaScript framework. Um, and what that means is a progressive, incrementally adoptable JavaScript framework for building UI on the web. Um, and so you, you probably heard the, the term progressive used with like progressive web apps, progressive enhancement. The idea being that uh, when you have resources available, you progressively get better or add more to your app. Um, and that's really the philosophy of Vue.js. Um, it originally started out very similar to React as just the Vue layer, um, but it has core libraries that can be brought in to kind of build it out as a more full-fledged framework if that is what you want to do with it. Um, and this is kind of the spectrum of all the different things you might need in an application, um, starting with declarative rendering, which is really awesome to do. I'm going to show some examples of how it works, but this is like you're defining your view um, in according to what your data might hold. But that's not accounting for uh, components or routing or state management or all the other things that we usually, we usually care about with uh, front-end frameworks. Um, but Vue.js allows you to bring those things in as you need them. Um, and so Vue.js is a front-end framework. And typically, this is the format that front-end frameworks use or, or, or how they work nowadays. The idea being that you define your view to uh, be a representation of your data. You might be familiar with handlebar templates or something similar like that. You basically say, if I have some data, this is what the view would look like according to that. Um, and then you have your state, which is your data totally separated from the view. Um, and then various frameworks implement some sort of render cycle where when the state updates or the data updates, the view will re-render. So that's what we're working with with Vue.js. This is uh, how React works. This is how Angular works, how Ember works. Of course, the implementation implementation details are much different, um, but this is what we're talking about when we talk about a front-end framework. Um, so I'm going to take the three bullet points from Vue.js's website and sell the framework to you. Okay, so Vue.js is approachable. Already know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Read the guide and start building things in no time. Um, the, the thing about this, though, is for a lot of other frameworks, you do have to learn a special syntax or a different language, but with Vue.js, you can just use what you already know. Um, it is also versatile, so it has a simple, minimal core with an incrementally adoptable stack that can handle apps of any scale. Uh, so this is the progressive thing that I was talking about a moment ago. Uh, and lastly, it is performant. It's only 20 KB uh, when it's minified and gzipped. It has a blazing fast virtual DOM implementation, um, and because of this, you hardly ever, ever have to actually do any optimization of your own. It just works, and it's fast. So that is Vue. Let's talk about the history of you. So where did it come from? Um, it was created by Evan Yu in 2013 while he was working at Google. Um, so I have a quote from an interview that he was in. My job at Google involved a lot of prototyping in the browser. We had this idea and we wanted to get something tangible as fast as possible. Some of the projects used Angular at the time, and for me, Angular offered something cool, which is data binding, and a data-driven way of dealing with a DOM. So you don't have to touch the DOM yourself. It also brought in all these extra concepts that forced you to structure the code the way it wanted you to. It just felt too heavy for the use case that I had at the time. Um, and then this is a little later in the article. And this, this really sums up what Vue.js is. And when, when you see the code, you're going to very much think this. So I figured, what if I could just extract the part that I really liked about Angular and build something really lightweight without all the extra concepts involved in introducing Vue.js? Um, and so, you might have also heard as Vue.js kind of like this middle ground between Angular and React. 
Um, and it really is. And you'll see that when we start to see some code samples. Um, some notable events in the history of UJS. It was first released on GitHub in February of 2014. Um, Evan Yu um, actually pre prepared to release it. He posted on Hacker News, he posted on r slash JavaScript, um, and it kind of blew up overnight. People were like, this syntax looks cool, this looks fun, I wanna use this, um, and it started to pick up traction. It made it to the front page of Hacker News and the front page of Reddit uh, the first day that he released it. Um, in April of 2015, there was a tweet from Taylor Otwell. So if you're not familiar with Taylor Otwell, he's the creator of Laravel, a PHP web framework. Um, but he, he did this tweet. Wait, that's not it. This is it. Current React learning status. Overwhelmed. Learning VGS because it looks easy and has a pretty website. Um, but this one tweet, like all the people involved with Laravel just like hopped on the Vue.js bandwagon and it very much started to pick up traction. Um, I also linked to this article, so Evan Yu, um, before this project, this uh, Vue.js, like he had never really done anything open source. So this talks about how he launched the project and really everything that went into like successfully releasing an open source project. Um, more recently, in September of 2016, Vue.js 2.0 was released. Uh, a really big thing that that introduced was its own virtual DOM implementation. So before that, um, not quite sure what it was using, but now it has its own virtual DOM. And if you look at some uh, benchmarks when you compare it against React, it typically comes in a little bit faster than React. Um, and I don't have those linked. You can find it. And uh, most recently, there was, in June of 2017, ViewConf. So this was held in Poland, um, but this is really telling you that the framework is getting big enough, it's, it's getting popular enough that there's actual conference that people would fly to and, and talk about Vue at. Um, Vue.js today, so if we look at it on GitHub, it has 63,000 stars. Um, I think React, let's just pull it up, has like 70,000, not that. I can do this. There we go. Yeah, so it's got like 73,000. Um, Angular has less than that. I'm not gonna Google it. But check out the GitHub star history. So this is the history of stars on the Vue.js repo. And so it was released in 2014. Uh, I realize you can't, it's really pixelated, but uh, we're here today and it has just gradually, gradually uh, um, increased in popularity. Um, if you go to these slides, this tool, it's pretty sweet, it's called Star History. You can actually overlay other projects on it, so let's just do that real quick. So if we overlay Facebook React on top of that. Waiting, maybe, let's let that turn for a little bit. Um, and let's also check it out on NPM. So it has uh, over 26,000 downloads in the last day. 156,000 downloads in the last week, 698,000 downloads in the last month, um, healthy number of issues open on GitHub, and healthy number of pull requests open. So it's an active project. Um, you can see uh, it, it is an open source project. So a lot of these other frameworks um, are backed by a company or something like that, but this is a purely an open source project with sponsorship from other companies that actually use it. But it's not backed by a company, it really is just open source and kind of owned by the community. Yeah, so this uh, orange line is the React line. And obviously it is more popular, but Vue.js is very much on par. This is my break timer. Can everyone reach into the sky, take a quick stretch. Cool. So, Overall, Vue.js, it's gaining popularity. It's, 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 a, it's a good thing. Um, people are using it. It's not just some trend. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I wanted to show by pulling up those stats. Um, and a fun little, little thing, so here's the version timeline. Um, all Vue.js uh, major and minor releases are named after an anime or a manga. And they're actually in alphabetical order. Uh, the, most, the most recent one was version 2.4 in July. It's a kill the kill. Uh, but that's a cool little tidbit. So if you like uh, anime, use Vue. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so now I'm actually going to show some Vue, show how it works, write some code. It's going to be a good time. Um, I'm going to show how to get started. So if you. With a lot of front-end frameworks, there's a lot of concept, concepts introduced, so build tools and transpilers and all these other things. But with Vue.js, you can actually get started without those. So I'm going to show how to build an app without it and really just show 
how approachable it is. I'll then show the CLI. So Vue.js has a CLI tool that allows you to scaffold projects. Uh, so I'll scaffold a project. Um, it has lots of built-in directives. So directives are a way to teach HTML new tricks. Um, and I'll show some of the built-in ones. And it also is a component library. So it allows you to build component hierarchies for your app, just like you would with any other modern framework. If we have time, I'll get to routing and reactivity and state management. But let's see where we get. And if at any time you have a question, feel free to raise your hand, and I'll see if I can answer it. Cool. Getting started. I'm going to take a drink of water. OK. That's it. That's all I need. Um, this is literally all the code required to create a simple Vue.js app. So here we have a, uh, just a constructor creating a Vue app. We tell it what element we want it to be on. Uh, we tell it the data associated with our app. And then our view just uses handlebars to render it out. But that's literally all you need. So what I'm going to do right now is just set up a simple project locally with an HTML file and show you how Vue works. So I'm just going to make a directory called getting started. I realize that's extremely pixelated. It's, it's, it's a shame. OK, I'm going to create a file, index.html, and we'll edit it inside of Atom. How's that? <laughs> cool. Um, so as you can see, this is just a plain old uh, HTML document. But let's bring Vue in. So you can bring Vue in uh, from a CDN. So to the docs. Now, the documentation, or the Vue.js website, is one of the things I love about Vue.js. It, it is extremely easy to get started. They explain everything really well. There's tons of examples. Um, and it's a really easy to use website. Um, so we can go into getting started. Um, this will talk about the uh, different concepts of Vue. But if you go to installation, it shows you a few different way to, ways to install it. I'm going to use it uh, from Unpackage. So if you're not familiar with Unpackage, uh, they essentially create uh, CDN links for any package on NPM. So in the URL, you just throw the name of an NPM package and the version you want, and it will give you back that JavaScript file, hopefully. Oh, not that, that. Yeah. So I'm going to bring Vue.js into this HTML right about there. And if you do just uh, version 2, it'll get the latest uh, minor version and pull that in automatically. Cool. So we've brought Vue.js in, and now we just write a Vue app. So I'm just going to have a script tag right here. Uh, I'm just going to say const app equals new view. We're going to pass in an object. We're going to tell it what element should be the view. In this case, it's going to be uh, hash app or id app. And uh, below that, we'll specify some data. So if you're familiar with uh, model view controller or model view view model, Vue actually implements model view view model. So the idea being, if any time you update something on the model or the data, the view will automatically update. So right here, I'm just going to give it a message property. And it's going to say, hello, develop Denver. Denver. Cool. So this is my view app. Now I actually want to show it on the page. So right above here, I'm just going to add a tag. I'm going to give it an ID of app. So those two things link up. And right inside of there, I'm just going to say, please show the message. And I'll throw that inside of uh, h2. Not that. That. OK. So this is our Vue.js app. We have a view. We tell it that we want to render the message from the data. We've created a view app here. And we're setting the message property on the data. And just like that, I have a Vue.js app. So I'm going to use Light Server. It's an auto-refreshing server. And there we go. Hello, developed Denver. <laughs> so I, I just I want to I take a pause and just admire how simple this is. No, no build tools, no, no really anything else required to simply get started with the Vue.js app. Now, of course, if you're building a production level app, you want to do that kind of thing. Um, but I usually gauge things about, on how easy it is for a beginner to get started. And this is extremely easy for a beginner to get started. Cool. Um, I'll take a second to kind of show you the docs because they're pretty awesome. So every single example that is shown on the docs um, is actually stored as a global variable on the page. 
And you might think, that's crazy, but what it allows you to do is actually open up the DevTools and play around with these examples. So right here on the Vue.js docs, um, we have this sample app, and we see that it's stored inside this app variable. So right here in my DevTools, I can simply just say app.message equals hello develop Denver. And I'm actually modifying the underlying variable on the Vue.js documentation. Um, and what I just did there, by updating this variable, you ac you're actually seeing a reactive UI in, in place. So the idea being, when I update the message property, the view will automatically render. Um, so I'm not going to go through all these examples, but I just want to show how easy it is to get started. And then every single one of these examples has some global variable that you can play around with in the DevTools. So that's a fun time. All right. All right, any questions about the history of you getting started with you before I move on to using the CLI tool to scaffold an app? All right, let's do it. So just like every other uh, modern front-end framework, it has a CLI tool that allows you to scaffold out your app. This is installed globally from NPM, uh, npm install g view CLI. Um, and then to create a new project, you do view init and then uh, the template that you want to use. So they have several templates available. Uh, Webpack uh, is the one I prefer. And then you uh, specify the name of your project. That will create a folder, scaffold out all the, all the view stuff that you need. You can install dependencies and then run a uh, hot, uh, hot reloading, auto refreshing dev server, which is pretty sweet. Um, we can see some of the other templates that are available. So there's Symbol, which is a basic view app, basic HTML file. Um, Webpack Simple, which doesn't include a lot of the, uh, the extra uh, loaders that are included in the full Webpack one. Browserify Simple, very similar. Webpack, the full featured one, including testing and CSS extraction and all the other things you would possibly need in a production level app. Um, they also have a progressive web app template and then a browserify template. So whatever you prefer to use, you can probably find a template for that. Also, if you create a custom template, you can use the CLI tool. You just specify a GitHub username and repo name, and that will uh, use that template to scaffold out a new project. So let us do that and test the internet. OK, so I'm going to do view init webpack. And this is going to be hello developer. Denver. Yeah. Cool. And so this will create a folder called Hello Develop Denver. Um, and it's going to ask me some questions. So first, what is my project name? That's OK with me. Uh, a description here. The author. Um, you can choose between runtime only, which is a little bit smaller, and runtime plus compiler. Uh, choose runtime plus compiler, because whenever you uh, deploy your code, you're going to uh, build it for production anyway. So we'll actually use the, the runtime only. Um, out of the box, it will set up a router for you, so I'm just going to let it do that. Uh, it'll set up linting for you and ask you what you want to use. I prefer Airbnb. Um, you can set up unit tests. I'm not going to do that for now because it takes a while to install. And you can also set up uh, in end tests with Nightwatch. It sounds like my voice is very crackly. Is it not? Yes, it is. Mm, let's check it. It is. Good call. Uh, I do have batteries, though. Yeah. Um, So we had just generated a Vue.js app, um, and you'll notice that it created this hello develop Denver folder just right here. So we can go into that folder and then do an npm install. That will install all of our dependencies. While that's happening, uh, let's check out Vue.js directives. So um, if you're familiar with Angular, a lot of these are going to seem very similar. 
Um, and for me, when I was learning Vue, that was a good thing. It, it, it felt like it took the good things about Angular and allowed you to use those, and then actually like created a whole new underlying implementation that's much better than how Angular actually works. Um, so uh, in modern front-end apps, you want to do things like conditional re rendering. So if something is true, show this element. If it's not true, hide the element. Um, you want to do things like loops. So iterate over an array of data and show all of the, the, the data as uh, line items or something like that. Uh, you want to handle user input. So uh, view offers v on events. So v on click, v on hover, v on mouse over. All of those are available to you, and you can specify functions that will get called. Um, you can also bind inputs to V model. This will bind your input to the data. And you can also uh, specify specific uh, uh, classes that can be bound based on expressions and similarly uh, with styles. So our Vue.js app is done rendering, uh, generate installing dependencies. Uh, and we can do npm run dev, and this will start that auto reloading, um, hot reloading dev server. And something's happening. Oh, not that. <laughs> Oh, go say, please. Well, I can kill the light server. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, so uh, after you've generated your view app, you have a basic UJS app running on port 8080. Um, it has a basic routing setup, and right now I think it has two components. So let's look at the file structure that actually got generated. So if we look over here, um, it has created a lot of stuff. So this comes out of the box with a Babel configuration and uh, a Webpack will transpile your uh, ES next code. Um, it comes with an NES lint file that you can customize. Um, it comes with post CSS rules that you can customize. Um, and it comes with all sorts of build scripts for building for production and uh, Webpack configurations for your local dev server, all the things you might need. The code that you will be writing will be in this source folder. Um, and it all starts with main.js. So in main.js, we bring view in uh, from the node module. And in here, we're actually importing our main components. So I'm going to talk about components in a second. Uh, but we bring that in, we bring in the router, and then we create a new view app, very similar to how we did it earlier, and we specify the app uh, element. So this basic index.html file that it generates is very, very basic, uh, just has a div, but when you, whenever you build it for production, everything else that is required for your app will automatically get injected. Um, so that's our app. I'm going to go into app.view and start playing around with some of these directives, and then we'll take a step back and really e explain what is happening uh, in this app.view component. So right now it has this router view. I'm just going to get rid of that. It has this image. just going to get rid of that. Let's just throw an h1 with a message. Um, and on components, you specify data as a function, because the idea is um, for every instance of that component, it needs to return a new object. So instead of just being an object, it's a function that returns an object. Um, my linter is telling me I need to do lots of stuff like that. And we're going to specify a message that is, hello, develop Denver. And I need a trailing comma. There we go. So we got our basic app. It's saying hello. So let's look at some of these directives. Um, yeah, so let's look at these conditional rendering directives. So something like the if. So right here in my view, let's say I have a div. And I can say right here v dash if. And inside the double quotes, I can specify a Vue.js expression. So this expression has access to all the variables on data. And I can specify anything in there. So Right here, I'm going to say, be if is awesome. Yeah. Uh, is awesome. Yes. OK. When you go back to the browser, I'm going to show something that is awesome about Vue, the error messages. So Vue has really easy to read error messages, and they tell you exactly what you need to fix. So right here, this first one, property or method is awesome is not defined on the instance. This is my break timer again. It's been 15 minutes. Can you believe it? Reach into the sky. 
<laughs> cool. So these these error messages are extremely helpful. So is awesome is not defined is defined is not defined on the instance, but referenced during the render. So our render function is trying to use this is awesome variable, but it's not defined on the instance. Uh, make sure to declare reactive data properties in the data option. So I will do just that. So down here, I'm going to say is awesome is true, and now it says is awesome. Cool. Um, so this actually is hot reloading and auto refreshing. So the errors stick around, but if I do a hard refresh, those errors go away. Um, so v if is a thing. There's also v else that can come right after a v if, and this thing will be rendered if that's not true. Not awesome. <laughs> and so if we set is awesome to false, not that false, um, it'll say not awesome. And so the idea is you can use this conditional rendering to specify what should be showed in the DOM and what shouldn't. Uh, one thing to note is uh, vif and velse will actually remove those elements from the DOM if it's not true. So um, yeah, it, it, it literally removes those elements. If you're using vhide and vshow, it just sets display none. So depending on the app that you're developing and the behavior that you want, you might choose either, depending on what's going on. Okay, let's take a look at v4, one of my favorites. Use it all the time. So right here, I'm just going to do, and actually, let's change it back to true because we are awesome. Cool. Um, and right inside of here, I'm just going to have, before I do any of that, let's get some data. So I'm going to make an API request out to the Jiffy API. And we're going to get some cats. Cool. So that works. So, um, and uh, just real quick, I'm going to, just to get this working, actually, no, I, we'll wait. We'll do the API request in a second. So right here, I'm just going to say, uh, let's say cats. And this is an array of cat names. Give me a cat name. Brian. Tabby. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> uh, Tabby, is that what I heard? One more. Snuffles. I like snuffles. Snuff, snuffles? Snuffles. Snuffles, OK. Cool. Cool. So we got we, we have an array of cats. Now we're going to use a v4 that iterates over that and shows it in the view. So just right here, I'm going to add an unordered list and then a list item. And right on the list item, this is the thing that I want to repeat. So for every item in that array, I want a new list item with the cat name. Um, so right here, I'm going to see v4 equals cat in cats. And then right inside of here, I can throw cat. And just like that, we get all the cats. Right? So the idea here is cats is a reactive property on our data that is an array. And we're saying for every item inside of that, give it the name cat and then render that right here inside the list item. So super powerful. You'll use this all the time. Um, yes. Handling user input. So let's make a simple little form that lets us add a cat to the list. Um, and I realize all these styles are really throwing me off. Let's not do that. OK, sure. Um, so Right about here, I'm going to create a form. I'm going to create an input type of text. The name is name, and the ID is name. And above that, I'll do a label, which is for name, cat name. And then I'll have a simple little button that we can click to add the cat. So add cat. Cool. Uh, we'll give it a type of submit, so this will submit the form. Now, the other directive uh, that I talked about a little bit earlier is in, uh, v, v, wait, my angular brain kicked in. V model, I almost said ng model. Okay, so on the input, basically we want to say, when we're typing in this input, we want to bind it to one of our reactive data properties. So right here, I'm going to say V model, and I'm going to set that equal to cat name. And so now, on our data, we can specify cat name, and this, oh, will be updated under the hood as we type into that input box. So uh, just to show how that works, I'm going to just throw right there a cat name so we can see, see it working. So I start typing, and it starts showing up. Awesome. What I want to do is when I click this, I want to take the value that's in here and add it to the list. So let's do that. These uh, vOn directives uh, allow you to specify specific events. So I'm actually going to use a vOn on the form. Do vOn. And I'm going to say submit. Um, and when we submit this form, we're going to call a function that's in our component. So here I'm going to say add cat. 
Now I have to define that function. So on a view component, you can specify methods. This is simply an object uh, with functions inside of it. And those functions can be called inside the view. So right here, I'm going to say add cat. And this function is simply going to take the cat name and push it into the cats array. So we're going to say uh, this.cats.push this.cat name. And so because the data is reactive, the moment we push it into this array, it's going to pop up in the view. The other thing we'll do uh, is be uh, because we're nice UX citizens, we will clear the form. So by simply setting cat name to an empty string, that clears the format. So there's one last thing we've got to do, but let's see it happen. Do a hard refresh. So give me another cat name. Snowball. Awesome. <laughs> Snowball. Like that. Okay. We'll add the cat watch. It'll show up for a second, and then the page refreshes. So the page refreshes because we're not preventing the default action. So like when we submit the form, it's actually uh, like making a git request against itself. So to fix that, you literally just have to say dot default. And built into view, it knows it will now prevent the default action. So now when we add a cat, snowball, go. It adds it, and the page doesn't refresh. Pretty awesome, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I'm not going to demo class and style binding, uh, but it's very similar to a lot of other frameworks. The idea being um, you, can, you can add some class to an element if certain expressions are true or false, um, and you can specify various style properties if certain expressions are true or false. All right. Um, cool thing to note is there are shorthands. So um, I don't have any vbinds right now. We'll, we'll probably add some later. But uh, you can simply leave off vbind and just have a colon, and your uh, data will be bound to that element. Um, and for events, you can actually uh, replace v on with just an at sign. Um, and the idea is you're using these things often, so it's a nice little shorthand. You can just do that. Works in exactly the same way, uh, but it's a little more readable, less verbose. Cool. Any questions about the directives in view before we talk about components? Wonderful. All right, so like every other modern UI, I keep saying that, I'm gonna stop saying that. Um, you, you have an app, you wanna break it up into components. So we have like a nav bar, and we have uh, the main section and the sidebar. And when you're structuring this app, it's a component hierarchy. So you have child components uh, of parent components, and they all descend from like the app level. View allows you to do this, it allows you to do it beautifully. Um, so our code might look like this. So we have our ID, uh, div app, um, we have our app nav, which is a component that we created up at the top. We have our app view, which is a component we created. We have our app sidebar, which we also created, and app content. But by simply structuring out these components, each one of those components itself has a view and, a, and some data and some methods that will um, specify the functionality for each one of those components. Now, uh, if you're using um, uh, view without any build tools, you can specify components like this. So you say view.component, you give it the name of the component, and then a template string. Uh, so the template string is just uh, uh, some HTML, and inside of that, you can actually have handlebars uh, or bindings uh, to the data. And then to use that component, you simply just specify uh, the name of the component. Now, in this case, this is a global component registration, meaning that once you do this, you can use this component throughout your application. Um, I'm going to show how we actually register components uh, only where they're needed, so they're not like global variables. But if you're, if you're just getting started with Vue, this is how you could create components. Um, one of the other things you want to do with components, though, is pass data into them, right? So you're, you're specifying elements, but you, you have data in a parent that you need to get down to those components. So for that, you need props. So we can specify the same component in a very similar way, but now we just tell it what props do we have. So in this case, uh, you specify an array of all the, the props or the attributes that this element will have, and you give it a name, and then we can actually use that prop inside of the template. So, um, actually, I didn't update my slide. This literally should just say title. Um, because in our data, we, doubt we have an array of talks. Each one is just a string. And when we render out each of these components, we want to pass down that string so that that component shows the title of the talk. So that might look like this. So we have some unordered list, and then we specify our new component that we created. Um, and then we use our v4, which will work on any custom component as well. And, we'll, and we say, for every talk in the talks array, please, please create this talk item component. 
And here we, we use our uh, binding. So typically you would see v dash bind colon talk. So what this says is, I want you to bind the talk prop, which was specified in the component, to be this value, which is coming from the v4. So we're literally passing down the talk to that subcomponent so that it can render that value. Cool. Um, but what we were actually working in with the view generated app was a single file component. And what's really cool about a single file component is you can't see that at all. Um, but basically the file has a template up at the top. It has your script in the middle, which is defining your actual component, and then your style is down at the bottom. But you'll notice on this, we can specify any preprocessor for any one of these sections. So up at the top, it's using J as the uh, templating language. Um, the script, technically, you could use TypeScript, you could use JSX, you simply just say, this is the language that we're using here. And then for the styles, you could use Stylus or Less or Sass. And uh, the Webpack uh, build pipeline will automatically transpile that uh, into the, the thing that it needs to be. Um, by default, we can just use plain old HTML, plain old JavaScript, and plain old CSS. But it has the power to use those different preloaders. Um, and so when you define a single file component, it's actually imported as an ES2015 module. So it takes the template, it takes uh, the component definition, all the styles, and compiles it into a basically a render function, um, which is a collection of the template, the logic, and the style. Um, and like I said earlier, you can use what you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, but if you do want to use something else, you simply just make sure you have that webpack uh, loader, and you can use that in your components. So uh, seamlessly use Babel, SAS, LESS, or even PUG in the same file. Um, hot reloading out of the box, and also provides scoped CSS. So just to see an example of that, um, kind of zoom out here. This is what we were working in. We had our template, which represents the app. We had our component, which uh, specified data and methods, and then our styles down below. Um, but if we throw scoped on this style right here, what that says is these styles will not leak out to other components. They'll specifically only apply to this component, which is pretty handy. Cool. Um, view lifecycle hooks. So uh, this is where I will call an API. So every component has various uh, lifecycle methods that will be called when various things happen. So from the view docs, we can see what all of those look like. Um, your Vue.js application is created and the before create function is called. You can tap into that on your app and specify something that should happen before the app is created. Um, there's also a created event. So once the, created, the app has been created, you can run, write, uh, run some code. Um, there's a before mount. So before the app is mounted, before a component is mounted, uh, you can write some code that uh, does something inside of there. There's also the mounted event, before update, update, before destroy. Any one of these you can tap into to specify your own code that should run. So for my case, I want to tap into the mounted event. So when a component gets mounted, let's make an API request. So I will do just that. So your component lifecycle methods just go at the root level of the component. So right here, I'm just going to say mounted. And for now, I'll just log it out. We'll say mounted. And we should see that in the console. Yeah, there it is. So the moment this app component is mounted, that function gets run. So what I want to do is make an API request right here. So I'm just going to use uh, fetch, which is built into all modern browsers. We're going to request these GIFs. And then we're going to turn them into JSON. And then we're going to put them on the model. Uh, right now, I'll just log them out so we can see what property we really want. A linter wants that. Cool. So now when the component mounts, we make the API request, and what just happened? Got to invoke the JSON. Good call. <laughs> cool. So now we have uh, some data. So this is coming back from the Jiffy API. And we want to show some GIFs on the page. So inside there, we can look inside of images that has some properties. Let's do it. So on our data model, we're now going to say Jiffy's. And this is going to be an array of Jiffy's. And right here, we're just going to have, uh, we'll do a div, and inside of it, we'll have uh, an image. But on the div, we're going to repeat over GIF in GIFs. Is anybody cringing when I use a hard G on GIF? Cool, cool. I'm, I'm glad, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so right here, my break time, we're going, oh, we're running low on time. Okay, we're reaching to the sky. Awesome. Uh, so let's show some, some GIFs. So right here on the, the source, I'm going to add this colon, which binds the, the, that attribute to what I'm about to pass to it. So right here, I'm going to say gif.images. Dot, uh, fixed height small dot URL. Yeah, so this will, will bind to the Jiffy's array. And then now, right inside of here, I need to actually set this to be the data I got back from the API. So right there, I'm just going to say uh, this dot Jiffy's equals result dot data. Cool. Just like that, we can shift something. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet. Um, so I definitely am running short on time. Where am I? Who's in charge? Nobody's in charge. <laughs> Five minutes? Ten minutes? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, Vue.js router. So I've shown kind of like the basic concepts of building components. Um, but in every modern application, you have multiple pages, right? You have different routes for different things. So Let's talk about View Router. So, View Router is not built into the core library, um, but it is maintained uh, by the core team. Um, but if you want to use it, you have to bring it in separately. Um, just like the Vue.js docs, these docs are fantastic. I haven't found a single thing that I wanted to do that I couldn't find in the docs. Um, but because we generated our app with routing built in, it's already set up. So, let's take a look at how that works. Um, so to install a router, uh, if you were doing this from scratch, you would npm install view router. Um, in the component itself, you uh, import in uh, view router and then tell view to use that router. On your main component, you pass in your router, which has all of your route definitions. Um, and then in your view, if you want to show it, you use the router view uh, component provided by uh, view router. But let's take a look at what they created for us. So in here, we have our router folder. And we can look at index.js. And we'll see right now it has one very simple route. It says, when the path is slash, load the hello component. So in app.view, I actually ripped that out a second ago. So this router view. When I uncomment this, what, that, what happens is the app will load up, and the hello component will get loaded because we're on the slash view. So now, right below all my jiffies, there it is. So this is that hello component, but it's being brought in from the route itself. So um, I'm going to do this real quick. So inside of components, I'm just going to create uh, a new component. Uh, and I'm going to move all of this code that I created into that so we can create a separate route. So uh, inside components, let's call this hello develop denver.view. Um, I have a fancy little uh, snippet that allows me to create a UGS template. So up top, we have our template. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of this HTML. We're going to throw it into the template. So a template needs one root level element. So I can't just directly paste it in. I'll throw in like a section and then throw the HTML inside of that. I need to move over basically everything. Uh, I'm just going just gonna to do this. We're going to take this out of here, pull it into this component, and then just make this a very dumb component. Cool. Now in this component that we just created, uh, I'm going to give it a name. So instead of app, we'll call this hello developer. And uh, now I can actually uh, use this component. So over in our router definitions, I'm going to bring in the component and then specify a route that whenever the URL is that, we will load that specific component. So right here, I'm going to import that from this. Um, so built into the, uh, the Webpack config, it, it tells it that what our, uh, our file path is. So we don't have to actually use a relative file path. Just by using that at sign, it knows to look in the source directory, which is pretty cool. All right, and so now we can define a new route. So a route has a path. So this path is just going to be develop. And the name is going to be uh, hello develop Denver. And the component is going to be that specific component. And so what this says is, 
when the URL is slash develop, please load this component into this router view right there. So by default, what's happening? Oh, true, yeah, OK, let's see. Components. I spelled out Denver. No, Denver, Denver. <laughs> cool. cool. So uh, notice by default, the hello route will load. But now we want to link over to the other route that we just defined. So built into uh, view router is this router link. And what it allows us to do is basically create an anchor tag that links to a specific route. So in my hello component, down here at the bottom, I'm going to add a link out to my developed Denver uh, component or route. So the name of the route is hello developed Denver, I think, is it? Yes, so the name should match there. Um, in our case, we haven't specified any params for the route, but you, you can specify route parameters uh, very similar to uh, any routing you've ever done before. But in our case, we have no params. So this just says uh, this specific uh, anchor tag is going to link to that route. So right there, I'm just going to say hello, Denver. And now on this component, I have this nice little link here. And when I click it, it goes to that specific route. Um, you'll notice the URL updated. And uh, when we're looking at, it's really hard to see, but way down, you definitely can't see that. Um, the, it, 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 by, by using this router link component, it automatically adds an href to this element. Actually, we could look at the dev tools to see what actually gets created. So it's an anchor tag that adds that href. You could do that manually, but by using router link, you just specify the name of the route, and it knows what URL to add in. Wonderful. Cool. What time should I end? Uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes, cool. Uh, we'll talk about reactivity, and then we'll do some shout-outs. So I, I've mentioned this a few times, um, but really, how is this working under the hood? Because every framework does it differently. Like, how is it automatically updating the view when the data changes? So Vue.js specifically uses uh, ES5 getters and setters. So in ES5, it's possible to create uh, basically a getter and setter on properties on an object. So you can, that function will be called every time a property is set, or every time uh, yeah, a property is updated, or uh, every time a property is uh, retrieved. And so by simply tapping into those getters and setters, uh, Vue.js knows when to change the view. So if you're familiar with Angular, Angular 1, it uses uh, the digest loop, which is actually not very performant, and it's basically checking all the time to see if things change. But this only is alerted when things are actually changed. So um, let's say a, a setter for a specific uh, property on the data is called. A watcher will see that that property was changed. It will then tell the view, hey, we need to re-render. Um, what this isn't showing is it also kind of queues up uh, those uh, renders. So if there are multiple things happening at the same time, the view won't automatically update. It'll kind of wait until all of the updates have happened to the model, and then it will re-render based on those new values. Um, but this is really great because it is reactive. Like, there's no uh, like polling to see if things change. Literally, it, it knows exactly when specific properties change, so it knows when to update the view. Cool. Uh, one limitation of this, though, is it cannot detect property addition. So if you're trying to add a property to something on your data. Um, so let's say right in here, uh, you had something like a user, and it just starts off as an empty object. If you wrote some code later that added a first name property, you wouldn't know that you added that property. So uh, specifically, if you want to dynamically add properties, you have to use this uh, view set if you're doing it globally, or this that dollar sign set. And basically, that lets view know, hey, I just created this property dynamically. Please add the watcher so I know when that thing changes. Awesome. Um, just a quick talk about state management. So with Vue.js, um, I personally love the built-in state management. Um, it works wonderfully, and you can actually structure it in a similar way to kind of like top-down, where all of your state is at the top, and it's just simply being passed by props. But it takes advantage of the reactivity of those, of those models. Um, so you literally could just have a plain old JavaScript object. This could be just a simple module that exports an object, 
And then your components could simply import that object, and now they're both just listening on that object. So if you push values into arrays, if you change properties, both of these components will be alerted. And that's just out of the box built in. Now, of course, if, you're, uh, if you really like React Redux, you probably like the flux pattern. Um, oh, I spoke too soon. But uh, there is Vue-X, which is created specifically for Vue.js and has a very similar style to Redux. So if you're familiar with that, you can use Vue-X. But the one thing that uh, changes is that Vue-X Vue knows about reactivity. This is my long break timer, and I'm basically done, but let's all reach into the sky. So because Vue.x Vue knows about reactivity, like it knows when certain things change, it takes advantage of that fact um, and really actually allows you to mutate state. So a lot of these uh, other uh, implementations are all about uh, not mutating state and just having a, a log of a reaction. But because of the reactivity built into Vue.x, we can still have a log of a reaction and mutate state. So we get the best of both worlds. Wonderful. Um, lastly, awesome Vue.js. So this is just a link to um, tons and tons of Vue.js resources. So uh, job postings, community postings, websites that talk about them, plugins for Vue.js, component libraries, utilities, all kinds of really cool stuff. Check that out. Uh, oh yeah, and I have a few starter projects. So basic Vue Starter is a project that I made where it uses no, no Webpack, no Babel, nothing like that. And uh, it's, it actually does use Vue component files. So I'm using uh, HTTP view loader, which allows you to specify your components just like you would um, when you're using a, a transpiler or something like that. Um, but it, all of this runs natively in the browser without any sort of uh, transpiler. So you can see like this is the code from this repo running live, like no transpiling or anything like that. And you can tell I, I like cat gifs. Uh, but it has routing, uh, all that built in. Um, and then I also have one that uses Vue.ify. So Vue.ify is a, a material component library. Uh, a few links to some of the talks I've given at my Vue.js meetup. And, okay, I'm almost done, really. Um, <laughs> so Vue.js community, uh, I am the organizer of the Denver Vue.js meetup. So we are having uh, a meetup on the 25th. I'm looking for lightning talk speakers, full talk speakers if you're interested. It's totally okay if you're a beginner, you can talk about how you learn Vue.js or something like that. So uh, please check it out, we're on meetup.com. Um, there's an official Vue forum where you can ask questions, get answers from the creator of Vue himself. Uh, there's a Discord chat, and there's also like a show and tell sub forum, <clears throat> very similar to Awesome Vue, um, in that people show projects and, and share repos and stuff like that. Also, support Evan Yu. So Evan Yu is the creator of Vue.js, and he lives solely off of Patreon contributions. So. He, uh, he manages the Vue.js library, he manages Vue Router, uh, Vuex, Vue Loader, contributes to all of these things, but he's basically doing it just for donations. So if you use Vue.js and you get some use out of it, throw him some money, because he's awesome. Okay, lastly, shout outs. Um, Develop Denver, let's give it up. This has been an amazing last round of applause. <laughs> I'm incredibly honored to be, to be up here and to be with you all, and yeah, this is awesome. Um, also, to the venue, like, I'm giving a tech talk and there's abstract art on the walls, like, this is fantastic, like, this is great. Um, also, to cast, so, um, this talk would not have been possible without my view nail, so if you can see that. <laughs> So Cass paid for my nail, and I, I could not have coded all of this without her help. So if you see her, this is her face, please shower her with praise, gratitude, and job offers. She's right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, Galvanize is hiring. Uh, so we are hiring lead instructors. Uh, you can go to gjobs.link slash lead instructor. Um, and we're, we're looking for people that are interested in being educators. Um, that said, you can be a senior dev and learn to teach people. It is a, an acquirable skill, which leads into Kim. So Kim is going to be speak, speaking next, right here on this very stage, on how to be a kick-ass teacher. So if you want to learn uh, teaching techniques and, and how to get to uh, your students and the people that you're teaching, stick around for that. Um, also, come say hi. I have tons of view stickers. I also have this custom Denver view sticker that I created. Uh, so come say hello. Tell me one thing you liked about my talk, one thing I can improve on, and you get a sticker. And thank you so much.